Rachel. And I'm Steven. And we're the Faint Divinities, a channel here on Twitch and YouTube and Discord and Twitter. Da, da, da. Uh, devoted to playing Dagger Heart, which is the new tabletop RPG from the Darrington Press and Critical Role Groups. Uh, in open beta, version 1.3 right now. Uh, and we have just, if you're joining us for the first time or watching this for the first time on YouTube, we have just finished our four, technically, but three actual play sessions of the Sablewood Messengers, which was the, or is still, the uh, the quick start adventure that is published as part of the open beta. It's a really, f it was it was fun. I, I know that today's feedback, but did you guys have fun as just an opening question? It was dope. Uh, yeah. Yeah? It's pretty cool. It was a good time. It was, it was, it was a good play test for sure. Yeah. I think this is probably a good point to kind of transition because we're at an hour in and we do need to talk about leveling up. So let's talk about leveling up. At the end of last session, remember that we went to bed <laughs> and, and I don't know why leveling up tends to happen when you sleep, but um, I do think the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that y'all are well rested. So for your long rest, okay, please go ahead. We do not need to role play everything here, you know, but just let me know what two things y'all are or doing talk amongst yourselves in case there are any group things that are happening together that way you are back up to wherever you need to be before we do the leveling so okay. rest mechanics who's doing what i will be getting some things back give me a moment i'm gonna tend all my wounds and stress because you can do two right yes yep so you absolutely okay, can because so, i didn't have any armor it was all hp and it was all stress okay Great. I'm going to repair all of my armor, and I'm also going to continue working on my project of my shoes. Fantastic. That is my, two out of three. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is anyone going to prepare? To get some um, I'm full on. I'm full on hope already, so I'm not oh, going sure. to. I'm also going to be uh, clearing all my health and uh, re uh, repairing all my armor. Yeah, Actually, and I already I, used my two. Do... Never mind. I think I can only work on my project on long oh, rest. So yeah, never mind. I'll, I'll prepare later. Yeah. Uh, but you could still prepare and just take one hope. You just get two if you're preparing with someone else. I took um, I took zero damage, so I have full yep. health, full armor. <laughs> uh, one yeah, me, me too. I, you know, <laughs> then choose two options below. Let's ask the question to the group. I had interpreted this as you have to take two unique ones, but honestly, does it matter? Like, uh, it's probably fine because what you could take the prepare action twice, right? I think that's fine. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't I don't see why not. Like if it's it's saying yeah. that you have a certain amount of time to do two of these things. Yeah. Why couldn't you do the same thing twice? I mean, I, I would actually probably argue the opposite because it's it, it would encourage you to work on a project uh, even if you don't know what that is yet. You could be starting something new. Yeah. Like, so yeah. otherwise players are always thinking just like, what are the tools I need right now? And that's, I right. Need to, it's not, you know, thinking more long-term, this makes them stop and. I, do, I and guess that does, mean? that does make a good point. That was my thought initially, was that to me, when it says two options below, I think it is supposed yeah. to be unique, you know? Um, uh, philosophy. Uh, philosophy. Yeah, yeah. That, is that last line there. <laughs> they may repeat oh, the same action. Twice are you like. kidding me? Oh my God. I love having you here, Philosophy an Dad. <gasps> All right. Well, the answer is oh, man. It's so fantastic that you're here. Oh my God. There you go. There you go, Chris. You uh, double prepared. Yeah, <laughs> he's hyper vigilant. He's ready. Uh, Nobody's getting the jump on tank. It, is it does not have that on uh, the what's it called? Uh, Demi plane version. Mm. Yeah. It does not. I, yeah. at least. I love a good paper copy. Um, Gene Screen says, so y'all not going to do back rubs to help with the stress? I think that, you know, the thing is, is right now they're taking these long rest actions inside of the White Fire Arcanist house. That's probably more of a private campfire moment, you know? Yes. I don't want her don't to want ask to... to join. If she's like, like can I get a back rub? I'm going to say no. And that's just rude. So <laughs> I'm going to uh, say I'll, no. I'll do, uh, yeah. I'll <laughs> rest, you know, I can't rub it every time. Uh, I, I believe oh, with the long rest, I also get to clear my vulnerability from that fight. I believe that was very oh, yes. specific. Yes. Like, 
yeah, absolutely that, your vulnerability is cleared yes so all right great everybody's rested they know what they've done with their evening so let's... <laughs> yeah you didn't think about that did you gene scream <laughs> <laughs> yeah the seven foot lady in the living room kind of just mm -hmm. opening vials and releasing fireflies into the fireflies night. she was having an emotional moment and can you imagine just two characters back from <laughs> <laughs> well, I I'm fair to say, is like releasing fireflies. We haven't talked about it, but Jimbo is also like ha having like silent tear moment, reading the letters yeah. from his. Which I'm gonna prep those and send some to you and everything. But like, yeah, uh, the, it was an, and then in the early hours of the morn, let's not forget your sister's just in danger, and we've I know we've decided that it because I said it both. Anna and Anna in the stream. It is Anna. We've decided. Yes, Anna, which I like better. Like, yeah, okay. for sure. It's cute. It was cute. Okay. So any questions about just like general uh, routine maintenance on your vehicle before we move on to upgrading to the leather interiors? Uh, I did have one thing. It was more of a, I guess, you know, inter uh, I guess question for you uh and since we're kind of trying this out i may ask if we could or if i could possibly tweak one of my original experiences yes. not right this second i need to think on it uh but one of them is like completely useless more or less uh unless we are start getting into a very heavy bar center uh, themed you know situations we're for just a long bar period. crawling yeah <laughs> that's right because hold my beer please yeah, yeah I... or where's my, where my beer where my, my beer, beer? Hold, my my beer? beer. Yeah. Well, hold my beer that might be more appropriate because I'm getting ready to fight. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, also, hold my beer is more of a like, uh, I'm about to do something crazy, you know? So maybe okay. hold my beer is what it, yes. The answer is yes. Um, so in, and this is in two ways. First the of all, is yes. in, two, in, in two ways. Um, what is the old lady's name? Jean screen ask in chat. She doesn't have one. It's not given. It's not given in the manuscript. My flavor for that. I don't know if this is the intention because I don't know how much I was reading in between the lines and now it's just canon in my head. Um, in the Sablewood, the forgotten gods, the old gods are so long ago that people still worship them and don't know any of their names. And I almost feel that she's supposed to be like a, a foil. Jesus, that really struggled in my brain. A foil for that of like, she's lived a very long time. She doesn't really go by a name anymore and nobody's really connected to her anymore. It's a sad, sad story. She doesn't have, have to adopt her. She has to be the group's grandmother. That's very sad, Rachel. Uh, that hurt my feelings. This is Nobody just, knows her name. <laughs> this is just in my head. Like, uh, we met the cutest cat like a week ago named Amelia and I love that, but I don't know if she could be named Amelia, you know? Um, um, White Fire Arcanist was title, the one note I took. Yep, it's totally true. It's her title. Yeah. Um, but also, y'all never asked her her name. So, you know, poo poo on you. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. All right. She asked yeah. my name either. Yeah. She took my. She don't give a shit about your. No, she does now. She does now. She loves y'all now. Yes, she did have to put the name tag on there. She's, that's right. She does know your name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She does. Yeah. Yeah. She, so there's a there's a surefire way of making sure that y'all that, that she knows all of y'all's names if y'all want to, you know, partake. Just kidding. She doesn't no, do that really anymore. Yeah. Particularly, she's yeah. a changed woman. She really is. To love is to be changed. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm going to move on from that. <laughs> the experience question. We have to get back to this. Okay. So there are two answers here. Both of them mean, yes, you can change them. The first one is that, uh, again, as Lucy Goosey as Darrington presses, they've said, change it at will. And even later on, they're like, hey, that thing at some point might not suit your character anymore because of your growth. You know, you were a shitty little person before and now you're a much improved person and you have a different experience. Change them at will. Um, but also we're in early stages. So even without, oh, he's changed from where is my beer? You can change it. Yeah. Uh, it's cool because you can evolve too, with maybe right. I but love something it. cool in the game happens, so yes. like that's my experience. That's the idea, right? Is that think of yourselves. Ten years ago, you might have had a thing that was core to who you were as a person, and now it's a totally different thing. You know. Oh, uh, example. Ten years ago to the day, I didn't play Dungeons and Dragons. I didn't play tabletop RPG, and now. <laughs> god it is so much of who i am as a person mm -hmm. <laughs> like so um it's maybe not my plus two but it might be my plus one you know 
My plus uh, on the experiences, yeah. real quick though. So we're gonna have three yeah. total after this. Yes. So is it one of them is a plus two and the other ones are plus one? Yes. Right. Is that yeah. how it goes? Okay. Correct. That's what I needed. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then one of the level up options lets you up. possibly increase the increase two of those by one. Yep. So let's talk about we're getting into the weeds of this now. Well, before before we before we jump past the so I think that is the first part of the level up, right? Is the experience aspect. Yep, that's where I was going. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Uh, I, I just I didn't know. I saw you start scrolling on there. I just wasn't sure where we were heading. Yeah, right to here. Uh, like, you can give me a moment. Boom! Yeah, heck yeah. Did anyone else have an experience they wanted to share that they're adding? What I've I saw on there already that. is a uh, death door. <gasps> Nice, oh, good one. What's it gonna do? That's good. That's a good one. I don't know yet. Oh, that's but so good. But he's experienced it. What world building? Oh, Jimbo. Oh my god, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. Oh, okay. Who else has? Who's gonna? I'm sorry. Who's gonna try to compete with that? <laughs> yeah, nobody I mean, can follow nobody. that. Nobody. No, nobody can follow <laughs> that. That's fucked. Mine's uh, T me. art. T T artisan. I, I make good tea. Oh, um, that's good. That's a cool one. That's uh, someone should take, like, I don't know, like, do it for <laughs> granny or something, you know? Yeah, I mean, mine was, um, <laughs> do it for the granny. <laughs> do Courage it for the granny. What, what was that? Then, uh, Courage of the week, and it was because of the arcanist. Oh. Mm. What is that making me think of? Courage. Oh, I know what that's making Solo me think. Solo leveling. Yeah. That's great. Courage of the week. <gasps> she was kind of like, uh... I guess my character um, is like very inspired because of the call of the brave warrior and her self-sacrifice is like very in that vein. Oh, I love okay. this game. I, You guys, I really love this game. Like this is so cool. Does anybody else know theirs? We have, oh, Kayla, you're the only one left. Do you know? Yeah, um, I changed my where are you looking and I changed it to slippery just because I feel like she's always damp and I feel like that will help her. But like if anybody's got advice, Y'all have any suggestions? Because I'm really struggle struggling. I'll think about it. I don't. I don't know what I'm gonna put in there. So, so for the people who are who are like listening in and stuff, the whole conversation here is that when Kayla first created this character, she made her to be like more of the bard, right? She was a little silly. Mm. She had shirked her royal responsibilities and was just traveling mm. with her little banjo. And like one of her experiences was she had derpy eyes, and she was like, "Which way is she looking?" But as happens. When she started playing the character, she's not, she doesn't, she's not a derpy character. That's not her personality. Yeah. She's kind of prissy. She's so. kind of prissy. Yeah. So, but Swamp Princess already might cover that a little bit. So, yeah. I so get I already it. have that. Too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Swamp Princess has done a lot for me. Hat -themed. <laughs> Isn't nothing, yeah, hat theme. Oh. Well, that makes me think because the she doesn't wear a white hat, but you know, like the old Western expression, like they're like they wear the white hat because that's what like the judges and stuff wore, and like all the cowboys, and they were really like law abiding. Yeah. I don't well, she know. She has uh, but... an eye for detail because it plays in her eyes, and I don't know. Ah, she's kind of funny. debonair. That's you know? really good. <laughs> Fancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a good one. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna make some notes, and I'm gonna have to come back and figure it out. Yeah. Totally I, fine. I Remember. No Nothing has to be final today. We're talking through it, but it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. final. So that's our experience portion at level two. So for people who will watch this later, remember, this is confusing. The way this works is that at levels two through four, and I'm in the, I'm in one of the character sheets. Every character sheet has this, but if you scroll down to the bottom of your, I think like uh, fourth page, you have the level up mechanics. At each level up point between levels two and four, you follow these instructions. So at level two, you get an additional experience. You don't repeat that at three or four, it's at level two. Then when you level up each time, you're gonna record it on your character sheet. If you're keeping paper, this is the, remember, very top right-hand corner of your page. It has the level area. You're gonna level that to two. We're all level two, guys. Then whoop, whoop, whoop. we did it. We did it. Then you're going to choose two available options from the list below and mark them. And we already answered this question, but you can choose the same one if it's this top one. So you're going to choose any of these two things and mark the boxes for them. This is the one I do want to talk about because it's the most complex. 
increase two unmarked character traits by plus one and mark them. The way that you do this is that if you choose to do this, you're going to select this box to show that you've done this once. Then you're going to go to the top of your character sheet. You will mark these little bubbles for the two traits that you're selecting. So if you want to increase your agility and your presence, you're going to mark the bubble for those. You're going to keep those bubbles throughout all of your leveling up from two through four. You don't erase those until you enter the next tier of leveling and those get a bump. Then if you want to increase again, because remember you get two options, you're going to do the same thing. You go over, you do not mark anything you've previously marked. You can only level up new ones. And then you repeat the process. You have up to three of those boxes to spend between levels two and four. You do not get to refresh these each time you level. So this isn't a list that you use at level two and then it's fresh and you use it at level three and then it's fresh, no. At, this is a static list that two through four, you're only gonna get to march these options once. That means if at level two, and I might suggest, we talked about this off stream, if you wanna continue doing a good amount of damage, you might consider increasing your proficiency because your proficiency, if we look at our weapons, is what fuels the amount of damage dice you get to roll during your combat. Me personally, I always like to feel powerful in combat, but this game is really cool in that you might choose to play a character who's just not gonna fight. You're like, I'm only a healer, or y'all take the combat, I'm the shopkeeper girl. Um, but or play like We, we tank, discussed yeah. uh, one potential like, optional rule uh last week yeah. uh which is like uh, I, I can't remember the name of it but it was basically like you know massive amounts of damage mm -hmm. like because like see me playing a rogue i you know if i do my proficiency i can possibly have i think it's you know uh just say if i have a basic sneak attack maybe throw one extra hope on there that's 4d6 and then my weapon damage and that's yeah. probably automatically their severe like you know their their highest amount of damage yeah uh like it's like kind of worthless for me to put more hope into like a big attack kind of thing I think for this group, given that you're a rogue and rogues are those one big hit at a time, it probably makes, it's probably very lucrative. I don't know if that's the word here, but lucrative for this group to engage with that. But if y'all do it, I get it too. Remember the massive damage is that if you do twice as much as they're, as they're severe, then you're gonna mark four and that instead would be of just three. instead of just three. Mm -hmm. That would be for anything I do to you and anything you do to me. Do we want to use that or do we need to think about it more? I mean, I'm, I'm okay, okay with that. that. I, I think if we don't have that, it makes picking the like increasing your severe damage option less worth it. Yeah. Like right now, it's just you, from right now, just uh, rules as they are currently. I would only care about the major one all the way through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because my major is going to increase automatically. And if I can keep things under my ma major, that's all I really care about. It's true. Uh, yeah. So uh, y'all vote. I, I, I'm not going to vote for this. Y'all are four people. If I needed to be a tiebreaker, I will. Who, who are the yays? Yes, we should go to massive damage as a I test run. Bad. I don't understand what's happening. Oh, okay. I'm Let so me crazy. explain. That's okay. Let's talk about this. Don't feel bad. Please don't feel bad. It's complex. Don't worry. When so, she said the list was static, yeah, I finally, know. Oh, I was oh. like, oh, I get it. Oh, good. Okay, great. Static. <laughs> great uh, yeah. I thought, I thought, okay. okay. So, Kayla, so this is, oh, you know what? I don't want to go to yours because I'd have to scroll all the way up. So, I'm looking at the warrior one. This box isn't filled in, but it's going to be 16, right? Because their severe is right. 16. Remember right. that when I attack you, right? If mm -hmm. I hit a 16 or over, you're gonna mark three health points going with this guidance, okay? But mm -hmm. in standard rules, after 16, doesn't matter. I could hit you for a thousand points of damage. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's still only gonna do severe damage. That's a hilarious thing about this system is that like uh, a dude who punches really hard does the same as a tsunami wave that hits you. You're taking three damage probably, mm -hmm. you know? But okay. as a caveat to that, the game proposes an optional rule called massive damage. Massive, the way that would work is that 
if at any point someone hits you for twice the severe threshold, in this case, 32, because 16 by mm -hmm. times two is 32, mm -hmm. then instead of marking three, it's no longer in severe, you mark a fourth. Now, mm -hmm. it still caps at four. It's never more than four, but that's a big hit. Um, mm -hmm. The argument for it is Justin has chosen a class, Rogue, you know this from Baldur's Gate 3, that just slams damage into a person. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you might take out more enemies if you invoke massive, but it's an optional rule. And if I do a lot of damage, you will also take four if I did if I hit that massive damage. Does that make sense? Very squishy. It does. Okay. It does. Yeah. So it, it sounds like this is um the opposite of like you know playing on the story mode, you know, just for funsies on Baldur's Gate right. versus like playing on honor yeah. mode. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. At least not. It's, it goes both ways, opposed to just it's yeah, not hard yeah, yeah, yeah. players. Yeah. Like they they had a mechanic like that for D and D, which was uh, a meat grinder mode, basically. Oh, yeah. Like and anytime you're like dying, you're at zero health. Basically, like you're you know trying to roll to come back to consciousness. If you're like you know normally it's like ten or above. Yeah. With the D twenty, so you had fifty fifty chance. But then like that version was you had to roll fifteen or above, so you only have twenty five percent chance of mm. yeah. like, even starting to come back. Ah yes, yeah. Chult. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck Good fun Chult. stuff. Poor Joel. Poor Joel. <laughs> so many people died in Chult. Chult's so many people died in life. Chult. Oh, the, what was it? The Soul uh, Stone? Yes. God. Chult. Sorry, yes, Kayla. Chult. Chult. Well, you do, <laughs> actually, Kayla. Where you get the spear? Yeah. Kayla, do you I do know. know I, let me explain to you. Water Baldur's Street. Gate 3. You know when you're in the carnival and you cheat that uh -huh. genie out and you land in mm -hmm. dinosaur land? That's Chult, yeah. baby. Oh, okay. It's dinosaur there's land. Lots of dinosaurs in there. Dinosaur yep. land. And there's yeah. in that rat sphere. Yeah, in Dungeons and Dragons, there was a curse happening on the lands of Chult that caused effectively meat grinder. I'm not going into it, but it was bad. Yes. Yeah. If you died, you died. If you yeah. died, you died. And then you had to just roll a new character, and your soul for that other character lived in a stone. I don't know. I hated it. I hated it. I never played that stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's how we lost average Joe. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. That that's that's that would be the massive damage. Yeah. I I mean, I would yay it, um, just because it's such a huge amount of damage. I think that if, if we don't, I'm still like my my character's so playable. It would just encourage me to only say like roll like you spend one hope per sneak attack opposed to three to six. It's important yeah. to make I a just... decision here because it will influence Justin's level up. So let's yeah. let's take a vote here. Everybody's clear on what we're what the vote is now, right? The mm -hmm. mechanic makes sense. Okay, so I will tie break if we need one, but yay in favor of going to try massive damage. Hands up. Yay is yes. That's unanimous. Yeah, I think it's yeah. good for his his character. I think it'll, he'll have the most fun if that's the option. And well, I'll I would say that was like that was it was weighing in my uh, decisions on how much to do during that last fight because at one point when I was fighting the wraith, uh, like I hit it once. I was going to spend more hope, but I didn't because I'm like I'm already probably going to hit its max no matter what. So I'm just not only going to spend you know two or three opposed to four or five that I had at the time, yeah. or I could have been you know maybe killed it or you know got it that much closer. The potential yeah. of getting one shots fun. Well, yeah. this is gonna I mean, increase. Go to four, yeah. It's gonna Famous increase the place. likelihood that Justin can one shot some stuff for y'all. Um, so let him hide. Let Not that him. Let that let boy him cook. I'm not talking to you anymore for the rallying. You're just gonna have to listen quietly. <laughs> hey, if you yeah, you have to listen <laughs> quietly. You can always yell at uh, Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted yes, are always always constantly always loud. Our and... ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both always ready for a combo attack. Very loud. <laughs> I say your uh, rally yeah. is like, I'm a distraction, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Great. So great. We have figured out two things. I forgot what the first one was, but I'm going to watch this stream back. Uh, but the second one is, yes, we're going to use massive damage. Yeah. The first one was weird. Oh, oh, increase, increase traits. That's right. That's right. right. Okay. So. Remember, you do not have to finalize these decisions right now, but who, who does anybody know what they are choosing? What were you to do? about to say, Justin? Were you about to say, uh, say one minute of play test feedback? I'm going to suggest is like they did it on the uh, the side cards or side cars uh, where they bolded the keywords. They didn't do that on here, and that's oh, what made yeah. me miss the character traits part. Because like this first one I read like multiple times, I, I kept uh, understanding it as. Like anything that didn't wasn't marked. So like if my health was at max, 
I could not possibly count it as one of my unmarked character traits. But if uh, they would have folded yeah. character traits, I would immediately, oh yeah, my main stats, great. My main stats, Well, yeah. also, yeah. the word that, bubbles that, here uh -huh. would just do wonders, I think, if they were like, bubble in the circle next to the trait. Yeah. That would be huge. Same thing with proficiency. Bubble in the proficiency bubble. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I did. So like, yeah. just say bubble it in. Character feedback, guys. Um, I think there is uh, one that's like, we leveled up, you know? So anyway. Yeah. Nice. Anybody know what they're doing yeah. though? Yeah, I'm um, definitely I've... doing proficiency and major threshold. Great. Exact same. Listen, <laughs> I think that that's a solid first level move. It keeps okay. me alive more and makes me hit things harder. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, I did I did proficiency, but then I did the increase the two traits. And I, I increased that. Okay. Yeah, that's finesse cool. Finesse and then presence. Oh, cute. Oh, yeah. presence, presence is your plus spell three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my finesse is what the um, her cutlass is using everything. Oh, does it, does it make my evasion score go up? I'm pretty... No, uh, right? Oh, no, I, I think, think that's, that's actually... Amazing. Is it... Is it finesse or is it uh, oh, for me? I have it's... one that my agility, um, uh, agility. I think it is, I think, raises I think my evasion. Yeah, I think it's specific to class. I don't think it. It's well, a bone yeah, what, trait. Yeah, I think. What is my class? Is no, we're listen. Somebody write we'll that. Of one of y'all put that in the Discord yeah. chat for uh, a follow up action item, and we will look into yeah. that later because I don't think it works yeah. like that. When I click yeah. on my uh, like on my character sheet on Demi Plane, I click on evasion. It explains my my score comes from I got plus twelve from my class and negative one from a full plate, yes. and it has no mention of my it's, yeah, uh, evasion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. That's a that's a There's D and D also... thing. <laughs> There is also an option, which I was looking at for, like, my next level up, is permanently add one armor slot or a plus one to your evasion. Mm -hmm. So they already have it in this level up where you can uh, add actually, your evasion, yeah, which I, I will eventually. But, yeah. You got my hopes up. I was like, is there a way I can get two? <laughs> no, I was excited. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 like, see, and this, again, is, like, who gives a... Who would care to um, stress slot edition at it, it right now in this version? Um, okay. Yeah. Well, you guys know how to mark those things, but we have to take mm -hmm. this as well. Increase your severe damage threshold by plus two. Everyone does yeah. this. Okay. Um, and the fun part of this, once y'all have that all worked out, we get to now choose a new domain card at your level or lower. Before we do this, let's talk about that question, okay? Um, so the question came up prior to stream of how does how do these domain cards work? Remember, in this game, every class has the... I'm going to try to get there. Please ignore all of the frantic scrolling real quick. Uh, it just takes a while to load because, again, I'm just running so many things, but it should come up in a second. So in this game, every class has specific abilities that they can use. Those are called domain cards for the most part. Um, each class has two domain cards groups that they can use so for example we're looking at bard right now at level they always have access to the grace deck and to the codex deck at level one you can only select from items that are marked with a one here at level two, you could choose a level one item or you could go and choose a level two item now this is where it gets a little wild though you can, when you are creating a character, choose two options from level one. A starting character gets two level one cards. So, for example, when you're a bard, you can pick any of these in any of two of these. You could choose two of the grace ones, two of the codex, one of each, it doesn't matter. Then, for each additional level you have opportunities to add domain cards. At level two, for example, you get to add one new domain card. You can choose them from the level two or the level one. This isn't gonna matter at low levels, but I'm going to introduce it anyway. Justin, do you have something real quick? No, that'd be for after this. I oh, just okay, wanted to note like, uh, about the 
we have the ability to basically swap or yeah. like if we share a, a section, but we can get to that. After. Yeah. Yeah. Because this next part and the thing that Justin's talking about, it's not actually going to matter until higher levels. Okay. You at any time can have five domain cards active. That is called your hand. That is your hand of cards. Okay. So remember at level two, you only have three. So that's not your max. So you still have, you have three in your hand. It doesn't matter. At level four, you might have four. At level five, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at some point, you're gonna have a lot of cards that you've selected. Maybe, I think up to like 10, maybe more. But you can only have five active. And then you have a thing called your hand that is the active items in play and your vault. In D&D 5th edition, this is things like choosing your spells that you have prepared for the day. But the difference and the cool, one of the coolest things about Daggerheart to me is that if you don't prep the correct domain card and you really need it because, you know, you need that spell you realize in combat, you can actually swap from your vault into your hand, trading one of your cards out of your hand and into your vault. But to do that, outside of a rest, you must spend the cost uh, in stress points, I believe it mm -hmm. is stress. It's in the top right hand corner. And for example, if it's a zero, it costs nothing to switch it out. Um, but if it's one, it costs one stress that you mark. I love this. I think it's awesome. Um, yeah. D and D five E sucked if you were like a cleric or a, uh, you know. Freedom. I mean, honestly, like a cleric or like a druid, a druid. like it, it, it felt like sucky in the moment. But like they were lucky in comparison. Like if you were it's like true. a sorcerer or a warlock, you were luck. You were stuck with the spells that you chose until level up. Yeah. So if you picked something and then you use it two or three All times, okay. you're like, this sucks. Yep. You're the stuck. You, you just, you got to kind of stick it out. Uh, but this game, like Rachel was saying, once you get the, like that spell list, your, your card, your domain deck kind of built up, it's not as punishing. It lets you kind of play around with that. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of wish they had left the word vault as like, that's something you don't have until you reach level five, unless yeah. like as a DM, unless like that could be like a, you know, a scroll that someone finds or mm, like ways yeah. for players to pick it up along the way. Yeah. Uh, Cause otherwise I, like, I don't really see the point. I, I don't see the point of the vault until you get to a point when you have enough cards. There's not, exactly. there's not. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't think I've seen anything that subverts that. No. Um, maybe I've missed something, but I don't think so. Um, it wouldn't make sense to me either. They're so strong that I don't think it makes sense to give people optional ones, you know? Yeah. But um, this is a tough mechanic, though. This is a tougher mechanic than a lot of other things is how that hand and vault works. You don't have to worry about it until like level five, though, basically. But one thing I, I was starting to mention earlier, what since uh, Kayla and I share uh, the grace section, mm -hmm. which I don't know if anyone else, anyone else here, if we share any things. Uh, um, but like since we share that we could actually i think we just trade bone. so like mm -hmm. if i say have enrapture and she has inspirational words we could actually swap those if we wanted to really uh, if like i i saw that in the thing where like if you're in the same domain you can make you trade cards uh what so people in the same, in the same that's stick. awesome i'll that's have to look that very, up very, I'll, I'll, very, I'll find it make sure i'm not lying please okay, find okay. that because that's yeah. sick because yeah, I was trying to yeah. find the vault info earlier, and I just came across that. I'm like, oh, that's neat. You know that really Futurama neat. quote? Interesting if true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a section on swapping cards. Um, if you want to switch cards. Uh, there you go. Oh, I'm sorry, this is about yourself. I want to read, and then I'll get back to you. Okay. Yeah, 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 Somebody dude. again. That's awesome. I expect, because remember, guys, I can't change my Discord thing during this. I have to keep it full screen, or y'all go into an abyss. So I expect that there are now two action items in that Discord channel. I don't remember the first one, but the second oh, one is looking up swapping those domains. Well, we cards. already figured out that the, um, the first one, because it was the thing about, could you increase your invasion score ah. by increasing your other things? We already yes, we figured that one out. So it's not important anymore. Excellent, it's not important. The new one is, Eek. can oh. you swap your domain card decks with okay. people that share your because that would be very very cool. that'd be sick okay. or i saw this somewhere i was scrolling through so many it. documents <laughs> we'll, we'll find it we'll... yeah 
I love that we'll I am supported up. so fully by my friends because I, as we all know, a little bit intense, a little bit of an intense person. And y'all, y'all are just like typing in a chat. Love me. I love y'all so much. <laughs> all right. Um, so, well, uh, that does add a thought though. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Did you have a question? Yeah. yeah uh, real quick. Yeah. So I got the um, swap uh, domain cards amongst players. What was the second one? No, the second one uh, we're good. We already out. figured that out. Yeah, yeah it, it was it was, it was the evasion stuff, but we we're good. Yeah. Out. Oh, got you. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Thanks. Thank you. I I really love you and appreciate you. Um, okay, so, <laughs> uh, okay, but it does bring up a good point, which is that the game, and maybe it would make sense that it would suggest that if this is true. The game suggests not to reproduce the same cards with your party. I thought it was more so that you see more of the cards at play, but that would make sense if that's a way of being like, hey, you could do it, but why? But, um, but I would yeah. suggest y'all try to take different cards for the most part, so. I um, think that's very cute. I don't know what you've got as like your grimoire or whatever, but like she's got a little spell book. She's just tearing something out and sliding it to Jim. She's like, here you go. <laughs> I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> well, I know that this probably we don't have the answers for, but does anybody know what they want to take yet of their domain I, cards? I know immediately. <laughs> he was um, ready. Yeah, I was ready for this one. Tell so us all about I, it. Uh, I got uh, the sage um domain which is like your like druid nature domain um and i'm gonna take conjure swarm um Ooh. which has Needles. two different <laughs> oh this is so cool no. <laughs> um, i love the like art on this card too because like their fingers are also little mushrooms which is just so mm -hmm. funny oh um that I don't know why that made me grossed out. It, it really got me. <laughs> I love I it. It's very. Good. I like it. I like it now. It was jarring to me when I saw it. I left back. <clears throat> okay. Whoa. That's crazy. Um, but the the armored beetles. I mark an armor slot. But then I can essentially use a, a and it like covers my body in like little armored beetles. Oh my um, god. But very then cool. I can use a hope after I'm hit to. Uh, uh, keep them active so it essentially just like keeps using that one wow. armor slot yeah, it's so cool that's uh, for could, you, like, could you put it on before the battle yeah i think nice? so yeah it doesn't really cool have red. like any you could kind just of... be a monkey covered in beetles just the visual mm -hmm. alone yeah. look more it... importantly look at the second part yeah the second part's super awesome fireflies um so i can make a spell cast roll against any close enemies on a success, I can spend the hope to have the fireflies swarm them, doing 2d8 magic damage to all targets Ooh. he succeeds against. Um, I love that. So, like, area attack, super cool. Um, mm -hmm. But then uh, magic damage. That was my that was one of my complaints in our last, uh, at the end of the last one, was that the other It was just me, and was I was missing. Other, yeah, the other sage <laughs> one I had, the vicious entangle, does physical damage. Mm. Um, so now I do have a source of magic damage, so I there can't help out in that kind of situation. I love that. That's a good pick. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like Please, it guys, talk amongst yourself for just a moment. I will be right back. The cat has caused problems. I'll be right back. Oh, oh my no. gosh. How dare um, me. Yeah, did I'm, thinking, I'm thinking I may have been wrong on that part. I found one snippet, like what she was talking about there, on the uh, player should talk amongst themselves about... Uh, Making sure, that, right, like, yeah, if they share a domain deck with another player at their table, they'll want to have a discussion with each other to make sure that they take each other's preferences into consideration when choosing a card. I think I'd read that, and then there's another section about like during your long rest or during some other things, you can swap out your domain cards. But yeah. it wasn't talking about with each other. I was just like stream of consciousness into like going domain section to domain section. Yeah, and yeah. Just, like, mm -hmm. Mentally cataloged that as like, oh, I can swap with people since I'm taking their stuff into uh, like we're picking different things. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where I, I was getting that from. So, I don't Not know a rule, as far as I can tell. <laughs> I have an answer on this. Like, I was looking at this spell, Tell No Lies, and they can't lie to you, but they don't have to talk to you. And if they mm. refuse to answer, they mark a stress. So, like, yeah. what is the point of that? I mean, so if you I, get their stress I, up high I, enough. <laughs> but that's the thing. So, can I just cast it over and over with no repercussions? Uh, uh, does it require anything to cast that? Yeah, do you have to use a hope or anything? I didn't say anything. 
if it doesn't, then, then it's just then an action. I would say, yeah, it's just an action. Um, interesting. Interesting. Just wearing them down over time. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a way to keep people from. It's a way to keep campaigns from just com switching to torture. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Which is great. I mean, that honestly kind of sounds exciting. I know that yeah, we're not torture yeah. here, but. Yeah. So that's something some, some, some campaigns get, or some some groups get into way too much. Oh, um, geez, I liked an alternative. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, no, you're good. Keep going. I was gonna say like one other thing that we, did, I, Stephen, I think you were in this campaign. When we were going through the Doom Vault with the Adventures League. Uh, yeah, not, yeah. At one point, uh, we didn't want to do torture, so we yeah. needed information from some wizards. And through a weird reading of the rules, we would strap shields to wizards and make them fight it out. And who, mm -hmm. since they had armor on, they couldn't cast spells. And so, nice. yeah, it was a weird way to go about, you know, getting answers. Just yeah, you know, make these nerds fight uh, <laughs> until you know <laughs> torture. <laughs> that's the kind of that's the kind of tabletop RPG I am here for. Absolutely, yes. Um, <laughs> I very much was muted. Thank you, Gene Screen. But uh, he also said, "You ever let a June bug crawl on your hand? You think the armor beetles would feel all clingy like that? I definitely yeah, do. I do. Uh, yes. How else would they be such good armor?" You have fur though, Tedios. Yeah, maybe it's maybe he likes the feeling of tiny little. I legs feel like Stephen is realizing fur. it in his brain right now because he just like oh, shut no. down. He's like the cling. Of no, I think I think I'm thinking about it more of like so like the you know how monkeys groom each other. Oh yeah. Uh, 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 but yeah, but you don't have a monkey to groom you. I don't have another monkey to groom me, so now my beetles are thick. You know, like, <laughs> what are you yeah. doing though? Like, isn't that uh, his job too? Like, shouldn't he well, be helping you with the grooming? Yeah, the I, I feel like I feel like he does, but it's Feels just busy. I have a high I have a high beetle count. It's just Jesus. It's, this is I hate this. I hate this. I hate so this. Take no way. He's letting the dirt. Adora is gonna. <laughs> He's got the claws, like too. It is gonna be crawling. The one Wait. that is covered in well, dirt and the one that's they covered clean in me. They they keep me clean. Also, though, Ken, Ke Kayla, I feel like this is, if nothing else, this is a, a situation that calls for an RP for a long rest of, like, you clean the bugs off of him and snack on him, right? You're a frog. Well, she does like to eat them. That's true. So she's always got a bear. snack. So me, personally, I hate this. And Nora loves it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like, <laughs> I made that little fruit with the I didn't make it. It was part of the adventure. Fruit with a bug in it. I had a bug in it. That was very exciting. Delicious. Was cool. <laughs> me, Rachel, bleh. Kayla, the ribbon uh, yeah. moment. I would only let uh, uh, Bill and Honora eat the weak beetles, though, because I would need to keep the strong ones for a battle. The ones that got um, hit directly with the sword. Yeah, like, like, thank uh, you for protecting he's me. He's kind of squished a little me. bit. The easier as you can have him. That's even cuter, though, because now it's not that they're grooming you. It's that you're physically going through them yourself and selecting the weakest links and passing them like hors d'oeuvres. This is so yeah, gross. Yeah. This is just... I come to dinner with a little plate and then and, you're like... and, and I eat them too, honestly. We're all just like yeah. chowing. You know what? You would. The we animals. Yeah. <laughs> the, the animals weird group, in the group guys. would be doing some weird shit <laughs> at, at our evening uh, rituals. <laughs> That's how we clear stress. We just pass bugs between each other. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. Okay, Kayla. I know we've talked a lot about this tell no lies spell. Are you taking it? Do you need more time to think about it? Is there one that you like um, a lot more? I'm thinking about it. I'm trying What's to, on? like the only. I said you got to pull it up here. The troublemaker ones there is the one I'm actually leaning towards uh, on my side. Okay. But uh. I also have more spells for like my grimoire, which I guess would be better. Like there's uh. one where you can adjust your appearance. Right? So that's cool. There's another one where you can lock an object so somebody else can't unlock it unless they know magic, but it takes them an hour. And then there's the arcane door, which I guess is, is like oh, in Baldur's Gate, right? I saw this and oh my god, you guys, I cannot explain to y'all how much I am just, I don't want to say the thing that my brain is thinking, but I, I love doing door and transport spells misty step yes dimension door mm -hmm. yes so mm -hmm. i saw this arcane door and i was like I, I, see out no of the questions. two of these i was looking at this one too because i don't know that tell no lies would be more important than that kind of stuff and then the reveal thing like if something's hidden which yeah. is kind of cool because you well, just the, if you pick something I, I, from the grimoire you get three things like 
the idea i guess too is like once you you kind of you can do this because you can interchange out your domain cards when you want. i want to talk about this real quick knowing that y'all have a rogue in the party parallela mm -hmm. Spend a hope to cast a spell on yourself or one ally close to you. Cast it on Jimbo, for example. The next time mm. that creature makes an attack, they can split the damage between any targets in range that the attack roll succeeds against. He does 60 damage. He does 20 to three different creatures. They are all dead at most levels. Mm. That's a support okay. choice. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's... that's a support character for the most part, I think, of her. That way. I know she's got a push attack and ice spikes, but... The, you know your push attack is sick it's been one of the heaviest hitting attacks oh, epic. that is yeah, some feedback that i hear is that in this game those ma those like bards for example are just as playable as combat you know yeah um, but yeah you don't have to choose now but those are you know good options um i did have one quite i'll go ahead yeah. just I, I was gonna ask about that uh the teleport one uh like was that like just for your soul like is yeah. that a dimension door I thought or is the that same a, thing. you know an actual gate it seems to be just for yourself um oh. it doesn't say anything it does it, so yeah but like but guys uh you, this is one of those things where Oh no, how do we get to that door that's all the way up there in this tower? Bamf, I bamf, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, this is yeah. fly, but better. Like it, it also doesn't have a limit. It's as far as you can see. And if you're up yeah. somewhere high, you can, you know, go a couple miles. Yeah, you can go far. Well, Just, you know, for the DM worry in there. No, 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 no. <laughs> Within far range. Very oh, far okay. range is yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so that's, you know, again, far range is the sheet of paper. So okay. it's not mm -hmm. which the, the, your misty uh, stuff, I guess. Approximates so. to about like a like sixty feet or so, uh, maybe it's like I think it's like sixty feet. So anyway. It, it's your misty step equivalent. Yeah. It is, yeah. That's um, the thing is like that's really cool. I was also drawn to that. So I could, I, it'd be I, very cool to just see you frog jump. Yeah. <laughs> Basically yeah, that's, that's jump and disappear. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the flavor on it. Else. Yeah. So, so just cool. like through a little door. Oh my god, mm -hmm. so good. Chris, you had a question though. I want to get to your question. Oh yeah, for this rage up one. So before making an attack roll, you roll you may mark a stress to temporarily increase your proficiency by plus one until the end of the attack. You may rage up twice per attack roll so say if i rage twice i get a hit with double proficiency can can you tell me real quick where are you are you looking at your domain cards yeah this one's called rage up on the blade domain what level or second question uh -huh. the level is the number on top of the axe on those yes. right top left yeah so I wonder it was sick <laughs> <laughs> what level were you looking at? Uh, I was a level six once. So that oh, was great. Okay. Yeah. That <laughs> but question still stands. That's double, right? Like well, yeah, I, that's tax. I, I have to read things to understand how they work, so my brain has to go look at it real quick. Um, rage up. Here we go. Found it. Um, give it just a second to load. Before making an attack roll, you may mark a stress to temporarily increase your proficiency by plus one until the end of the attack. You may rage up twice per attack roll. And yes, that would stack because you may rage up twice. So you can get a plus two effectively on an attack roll. But you have to mark two stress to do it. Yeah, I saw there were some other abilities that were uh, like on the more magic side for support. Like uh, you could possibly like do it for your entire party gets a basically an extra proficiency until someone rolls fear. Uh, and like there's a bunch of ways to stack these a lot. Chris, you know what this is? You know, in Cyberpunk Edge Runners, you know how he was always doing the injections and then he's like, Rah! and then it like it's it was bad on his body. He's like spitting up blood and they're like, stop doing this. And he's like, I need more. Rah! <laughs> Yeah, what do they call it? Uh, cyber psychosis? Yeah, cyber psychosis. Yeah, 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 for cyberpunk. Sorry, guys. We had a little moment there. Um, There's another one on there, too, that um, I could increase my minor damage threshold to five, which is really sick. Very sick. Uh, is that... really what what like level was that one? <laughs> yeah. Let's look at the <laughs> level two ones. Like, so... For your level two ones, you have Reckless, which is you may always mark a stress to take advantage on an attack roll against a target, which right now, version 1.3, that's really strong. <laughs> um, yeah. 
uh, a soldier's bond once per long rest. If you compliment someone or ask them about something they are good at, you may both take three hope. Oh, how cute. A That's soldier's fresh. bond, just that <laughs> moment, you know, that dudes yeah. do in combat movies. I don't know why y'all shake like that in combat movies, which I'll do. Oh, yeah, Only in uh, like Spartan <laughs> ones or whatever, right? Yeah. Roman yeah. ones. Yeah, soldier's no bond. <laughs> Strategic approach. <laughs> After a long rest, place a number of tokens equal to your knowledge trait. I don't think that this one's going to be for tank. Uh, on this card, with a minimum of one, when you move into melee range of an enemy and make an attack roll against them, you may spend one token to choose an option below. Again, you'd have to have a good knowledge to do this. It's basically combat maneuvers you know um yeah, yeah. ferocity like we have a minimum of one on this one some of the cards don't have that written and so like there's some cards that I, in my section that i can't use oh really because i have like because i have like a zero on my presence so until i increase that stat i would so say feedback. Cards that useless. i would say um survey feedback because this is one of the things i know they were trying to fix um ferocity uh, when you cause an enemy to mark any hit points, spend a hope to temporarily increase your evasion by the number of hit points you dealt. Whoa. This bonus lasts until after the next attack that targets you? Jesus. You just become a, like, unhittable dude for a little while? Whoa. Knowing you, though, you're just going to not attack me. No, that is not how I play. I attack the shit out of you in the first combat. This one only worked for the next, basically, like, it only helps you for the next one and goes away immediately after that. So it's not for a while. It's just for that one. Yeah, but he's saying I would just be like, huh, and attacking you. And I resent okay, later, it. Later, dude. I resent it. That's not what I do. But I'm going to, okay. Hey, listen, I don't want to hear any guff from you when I just demolish you in the next fight with this massive damage <laughs> it's coming baby all right uh, so for no reason at all all the enemies turn away from everybody else and just go in on they say look at this little bug we gonna eat him <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um do you have any idea of what you like mm. so far of these um yeah like soldier's bond i like for rp but i feel like the game as it plays now especially as a warrior of the brave um i have a surplus of hope so yeah um either ferocity and reckless are probably the two that i'm more interested in because strategic approach is intellect so yeah useless it, and it really comes down to do you want to hit harder or do you want to take more hits you know or tank more hits uh so all right well good something to think about Justin, I think you're the only one we haven't talked about, no. but where is your... I'm game? either going with uh, Troublemaker, which one we were just had up not too long ago mm. in the gray section. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, that's the one I'm currently leaning towards. Uh, Shadowbind and Midnight Spirit oh, were the other two that sounded interesting. Like, I could possibly flavor it in a way that makes more sense for my character. Uh, which the Shadowbind is basically like, uh, I can make a spellcasting roll, so finesse. Uh, against all enemies that are within very close range and all that succeed they have shadows basically painting or restraining them in that spot um i don't know what all the restrain uh effect does i assume like D, &D it's you can't move and basically you're vulnerable but i'm not, I'm not sure um i don't think Midnight that spirit i don't think restrained actually makes you vulnerable i i don't have my spreadsheet up right now but i think it just means they can't move okay um so there was that uh but I and the midnight it. spirit i could spend a hope and basically get a spirit to carry stuff for me so cute i like my utility stuff as just a, that's how i play so that seemed like yeah i can do funky stuff with that it but can you also, can also like, attack, attack for you but as soon as it does that it's gone oh i didn't know that oh the spirit then dissipates got it i didn't know that okay. but, you know unseen servant from D, D, but then as soon as you attack he sacrifices himself <laughs> yeah well yeah. when i first i don't think that the dissipate part was in version 1.2 i could be wrong but i remember reading this and i was like this is solo leveling that anime that chris and i watch we just have a lot of anime <laughs> references lately <laughs> um yeah so those are uh, those two and then shadow oh, troublemaker which I just basically taunt someone, and then if I outroll them on presence, even though my presence is zero, it's just a roll off. Uh, I get to do D fours uh, versus my proficiency, uh, like stress towards them. But that was one question I was going to ask for, like a peek behind the DM screen. Uh, did they typically have like you know three four stress or six like us? Or uh, lower lower stress okay. lower stress yeah so so far yeah. at least um, and some some. 
there might have been an enemy that I saw that had no stress, but I think that was a glitch. Um, but yeah, lower but, stress. Uh, the one thing I was going to ask is like in a comparison for Genesis, like for uh, smaller like no name NPCs or like NPC groups, uh, they actually don't have stress and health. They only have one unit, oh, and so okay. any like stress or damage goes towards the same thing or okay. strain. Uh, so I was curious if it was similar here. Let me take a uh, look real quick, and I can like we I could give you all the inside deets now, guys. Um, so let's let, take a look at the thicket thieves first. So those those that first combat, ambushers. yeah, the ambushers, ambushers, <laughs> ambusher. Um, they had two stress each one of those. So, so if they were to hit that to max, that makes them instantly vulnerable. Instantly basically. vulnerable, absolutely. And, and that's just advantage, which is free stink attack. Yeah, which is incredible. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing for you, yeah. And then the ancient skeletons had one stress each. Um, so nothing, they were really, they were so squishy. Um, I did see something that I really thought was a good take. It was from that group. Oh, I think it was Roleplay Relay. They they, they said in the version 1.3, because minor threshold damage is reduced to one, group attacks are not actually as feasible in this because I should just have been attacking with each one of them to do as many hit points as I could instead of like hitting that 12. But um the wraiths had three stress, so they always have less than you so far. Um, yeah. Okay. But yeah. Yeah, because it, it would take a lot for us to pause and actually focus on stress versus like actually just hurting them. Yeah. Uh, outside of a role play situation, which yeah. would be interesting because like there's no reason I couldn't do troublemaker uh, like in a role play situation while not you know not triggering a combat. I'm just stressing them out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I know that y'all are at home probably hearing just lots of binder flipping, and I apologize. I had to look through my paper because I'm an analog girl. I already said this, but it's true. So. Hey, it's in Mario Sorts. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Well, I mean, again, I know that people don't have to choose their level up options here, but remember that before next Monday, which is when our game is, you should have those locked and loaded. Okay. Yeah, the only um, reason I just wanted to look a little more is I, in these kind of games, I love like synergistic things. Oh, yes. So yeah. I'm looking at like level three and what will like, I like to pick a path and like be like really good no, at just one thing. That's something that I, I mentioned in one of our first videos is I like to like build a character from the top back. Um, so I like to go and be like, it, it what quiet. Is yeah, I, I like <laughs> I like to go and be like, okay, what do I want my level, you know, max level ten character to look like? What path should I take to get here? I will say, it's easier to look at it this way, like the next couple of levels ahead, versus that like how I normally do it, just because there's so many options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. like thematically, you might like have a plan to do something one way. Um, like, oh, I'm going to take Armored next level, and then I'm going to take, uh, you know, like, whatever it is on the next level. But then the story plays out, and you're like, no, I'm actually going to take this one because this feels more, like, actual to my character now. Like, I wouldn't have picked the experience I did for this time unless I nearly died or did die, whatever, on uh, the last session. like I would have planned yeah. for something totally different. Chris, did we, did I, I don't know if I remember, did we hear from you which ones you were choosing of these the level abilities? up options? Yeah. No. Oh, I'm so sorry. What, what, That's okay. What? Um, you can... Neglected. Oh my yeah. goodness. Else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so horrible. What, what no, items okay. did you choose? Uh, let's see. Where's my sheet? <laughs> It's like proficiency, and then I picked like a threshold or something. Okay, like the yeah, major damage though. threshold. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. Well, um, well, again, everybody, make sure that you finish your level ups before next Monday. You have a full week to do it and everything. And um, I, 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 uh, I also get some additional level up options for uh, Bill. Oh my so, gosh! What? What are uh, his? Oh my gosh! Bill gets okay. another another experience. Uh, 
he gets a couple kind of cool things. So he gets another experience. Um, I'm going to do quick like a butterfly. <gasps> and then later on, I'm going to hit sting like a bee. And he's going to be. Oh, to that's very cute. <laughs> that's so um, cute. But then he also gets his own special list of like companion options for like leveling. Um, what? Steven, yeah. please tell me that he like there's a way for your companion to like wield a weapon. Um, <laughs> a so dagger our, in his beak. So already he's, I mean, not wield a weapon that way, but he's got a, uh, you give him a weapon at the beginning and it's like claws on his talons. He's got like metal tips on the ends of his talons. Um, where is this? What do you? You're not you looking at the paper, are you? You can't tell no, me. No, I'm on. I'm on demi plane right now, so I can't tell you. I um, I will tell you guys. This is the uh, first time I'm ever cool. looking uh, at the companion, companion sheet. Yeah, um, we also have another one for like I don't want to say wild shape, but like if you have a beast form or whatever, I think they have a whole other section for those too. Yeah, they do. It's wild because uh, I thought about doing a druid because I was like, ooh, I could be a changey thing. Um, but yeah, no. So the one that I'm taking for him is called Vicious, um, and it makes his damage oh, die increase um, from a D6 to a D8, which Ooh. is like, that's yeah. it's super cool. Um, <laughs> and eventually I can level that one up three times, so I can get it up even higher. Mm -hmm. um, but then he's also just got like different things. So like, uh, intelligent. You increase, uh, you raise an experience by one. You got light in the dark. You use uh, this as an additional hope slot in your character um, sheet. Uh, the creature, creature comfort. comfort is so cute. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you take that moment, just like a, like love your animal, and you both just clear stress, which is like super good for your companion because your companion's stress is their hit points. And they only have and three. So, they only have three. Much. On the armored one, uh, uh -huh. that seems to suggest like that's for your stats, not his stats. Your armor. Uh, well, like, he doesn't he's... have armor. No, that's, mm. okay. yeah. So I didn't know if that but, was if, if that was the same for some of these other ones. I'll look at that because I can just like unselect vicious and select that one instead just to see. What but, yeah, that seems to suggest like as soon as like Bill goes into fighting, you automatically get because you know, more he's armor. protecting you. Because he's protecting you. I guess that's assuming that you're fighting together, opposed to like what we did in the last combat where y'all yeah. basically separated. Um, but I wonder if like in that situation, could I say, uh, and this would be like a conversation between me and Rachel, but like, could I say? Hey, can I move that armored over to um, whoever Bill is protecting in that moment? Um, oh, so man. Anora could Bill has a heart of gold. <laughs> Bill, Bill, like I love companions. We gotta that's protect that favorite, rooster at all costs. That's my favorite thing about companions, like honestly, and that's why I like hated that Five E just did not have a good companion system. I they know. like tried to fix it a little bit towards the end, but it just it's still not great. Are, I, um, I have to ask you though, Steven, are you liking the beast companion in this? I yes? I do. I I actively am enjoying it and as I'm leveling it up and seeing the like care they're putting into it, it's making me more excited. Because like Can we I didn't know what to expect and now that i'm like looking into it more and more i'm like this is going to be super fun for like creating a super in-depth campaign y'all look at this bonded bonded mm. when you mark your last hit point your companion rushes to your side to comfort you roll a number of d6 equal to the available stress slots they have and mark them on a six they get you up clear your last hit point and return to the scene that again is a video Who's game bumped? mechanic so like can you imagine mm -hmm. that little rooster going over there trying to get his friend up oh my goodness that is so cute mm -hmm. god adorable yeah, you're just suddenly stressing the hell out that's a lot easier to roll a mm -hmm. roll a six i don't know how you can you know have three to start yeah mm -hmm. Reminds me of like Remnant 2. Your yes. dog licks you and gets you back up. Mm. Yeah. That's so good. This is so cute. Yeah. No, this uh, I am I I am pleasantly pleased by the the Pleasant. companion option in Ranger. Steven, you it's... have to add that to your survey feedback. You have to let yeah, them know yeah. how good a job they've done with this. This feels mm -hmm. so 
thoughtful. Because like in in Dungeons and Dragons with the it was just very much like and they get a they little get extra shot. health. <laughs> yeah. They're like they're they're like you, you your your animal gets five extra hit points. That makes a big difference yeah. at tier four. Yeah, when he's a like, bear. How does he have yeah. less hit points than me? <laughs> Yeah. He's a bear. <laughs> Trinket. Yeah. Uh, one one thing that does uh, worry me is like how, some of the phrasing of this, like I was mentioning, like we're like how it seems like they're planning for you and your companion to be, or y'all two to be basically next to each other, like this bonded one. Like if your companion is nowhere, you know, not in the scene, basically. Yeah. How does it suddenly get here? Uh, like that that's not being thought of here. And like it's you want to come you want to come up with the lens of like how how should it be played uh, versus and like how could people abuse it like. I know, like, right. Me and Steven are very familiar with how we used to play. Or really, like, okay, how can't how we're all the ways we can abuse this? Yeah, uh, we yeah. just cheesed a lot of things to like make it work. We we really pushed. Yeah. But, the like this is like suddenly like I like if I planned it out like great, I'm gonna send my thing in there. It's gonna get the thing. Uh, we're gonna be over here in this other town. Y'all beat me to death, and then it will be here suddenly with the thing we needed from a mile away. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, y'all, y'all were the worst. Um, like, just like <laughs> love you guys, but y'all were the ta- the like. It was all in good fun. That's the difference. It was always that, in good and fun, and y'all were never combative about it. You we know? wanted, yeah. There's so many times we would try to talk Brett into doing one of our other DMs. Poor Brett. Uh, uh, Brett, uh, Brett. He, uh, uh, we were we were trying to win D and D, which to win D and D is just when you get the DM to make do this uh, kind of motion. Uh, just yeah, game. That's, that's, that's when exactly. you won. <laughs> That's when he won. There, when, when, when Rachel's doing that, we win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. False. False. Um, we, we, you remember when we tried to drop the boat out of the oh. sky uh, on oh, yeah. yeah, that was that was a hard argument. Do y'all remember when we that killed that dragon with fall damage? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was very upset. I think you should be able to do oh. that with a dragon. You should have, but Sentinel's a well, motherfucker, you know? The, 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 rule we were, the rule we were teasing there was, like, if you have a hover speed uh, and your movement reduces zero, nothing happens. You're, you're yeah, still hovering. You're fine, you're but if you're, hovering. like, a flying beast with wings, and your movement stop and drops to zero, you stop flying, you fall. And so, yeah. like, Steven's character had Sentinel, which is the ability if you move away from them, they get to take a swipe, and if they hit him, it reduces their speed to zero. So, Big Dragon tries to fly away from Steven, he turns, hits him, speed up, becomes zero, they fall, and they die. That was the big wow. bad for the campaign. This is yeah. that shit where you guys yeah. lose me? Like, yeah, oh, I know, like, I was a hard blink, and I'm like, I'm trying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. That, that's where we were. That's our that's cheese funny. where we're trying to break the rules. Or yeah. We're trying to yeah. bend the rules until they mm-hmm. break just about. Which is uh, why yeah. I like having y'all for this is because we have two very different groups of people. We have the people who are here learning a new system, having fun with it, being like, is this sucky to learn as a new person? And we have y'all like that are like, how could we ruin this thing? <laughs> Running around as a rogue with a, a, a great hammer or war hammer, basically. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, that, that's not how it's made or supposed to be played. Yeah. Uh, you know, trying to do stuff where we're teleporting beast uh, by knocking out a player to nearly to yeah. death. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <That'd be laughs> Okay, so I I really do want to make sure that we're wrapping up pretty soon yes, here yeah. because, I you know, I, I don't want to run it long. It's almost two hours, yeah. We're well, right no, past it's, two hours it's been past two hours, but we're going to, but we, we have one, one more little thing that I want to do mostly, which, well, two very brief things. The first thing is I do want to make sure that we're keeping in mind the safety tools throughout play. This is usually the point when I'm playing with new people. This is the point, and y'all know that I've given y'all calls offline, the people who I have not played with before. Y'all have both heard from me. But I always make it a point to check in with my players, and I say, hey guys, remember when y'all were starting to play with me and y'all didn't know who I was as a GM? And then I did some really dark shit to your characters and you got calls from friends on the battlefield and your sister in the night and I gave you these dark scary moments of a character dying how as a safety tool knowing that your good time matters and how you spend your days matter how do y'all feel about this campaign is this okay from a tone would y'all like me to shift in any kind of way? Or are we all happy with what we're doing and what we're building here so far? Rachel, you were my DM for many years and I, I will let you do whatever you want. Okay. 
I think it's I think it's good. I, I like to hurt a little bit. So, you know, I thought it was all like in the realm of normal. It was all part of the good storytelling. It's not mm -hmm. fun if everything's easy and nobody dies. So, yeah. Okay. It's fine. Table of trust. That. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, I was table of trust. You know what I mean? I trust that everyone's going to uh, just have fun and do everything. Yeah. In a way well, that thing I was going to mention on uh, J Jimbo's death, I know you said it was like in the rule or in there already pre uh, kind of written on there. Like it's not been in the rules. It's not pulling bunches on there. Uh, but I'm, I'm like I said, I'm not that you like. I'm fine if you say would have just let him die. Yeah. Uh, and like I, I just wanted to note that like, you know, if it happens, it happens. We let it roll. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm fine yeah, with yeah, making yeah. new character, but also like if it's not the time, it's not the time. Uh, From yeah, here on a out. It's gone. Safety blanket is is mm -hmm. gone, guys. I I wanted to respect the quick start adventure and also GM brain was spinning with all of the story of the glimpse and everything and I was like there's a story I can tell here. Mm -hmm. But from here on out, I let characters die. If you die, you mm -hmm. die. That's why you play a video game is because it's mm -hmm. not your body and it's not your life. You're safe. Mm -hmm to have these things happen and wow blaze that of is glory? something mm -hmm. blaze wow. of glory is wonderful uh yeah. that is something that i think is good to kind of address as well as like um with these characters uh if we you know if they die and it's not achievable to bring them back in whatever way i love my characters but i also always have other characters that i'm ready to play so like don't uh I don't want uh, 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 the idea of our characters dying to be like, well, but Steven's not going to have his Tedios anymore. It, it happens. Well, we all know that, to, you know, stakes, first of all, make the game enjoyable. If mm -hmm. you can't die, where's the risk? You know, no risk. Mm -hmm. And that's the other piece of it is no risk, no reward. Pain mm -hmm. makes joy more poignant you know like i firmly believe that that's why i give you a really creepy old lady and then i show you her vulnerability so that you're like because the moments when kayla at the beginning is like i don't like this i don't like her and then at the end she's like i hate how much i love her i love her is like yeah. so rewarding for me of like ah oh, look we got into the nuance we really smelled the flowers here you know mm -hmm. um so okay cool well, remember, safety tools always in mind, X cards always in mind. If at any point something gets too real, let me know. If we need to revise any like lines or veils, let me know, you know. Um, but I'm glad that we have the table that we do, and I will continue being a horrible person. So <laughs> I love that for me. <laughs> Auntie Ethel in oh. coming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so. The last real piece that I have is that I do think I've asked you guys, I've said that we were going to do this for a while. So, so it's time. It is time. Um, we have, this is actually something that they suggest to do in session one, um, which is that they have these campaign maps and I have selected campaign map two for us. Now this is going to, I understand this is not going to translate very well to the stream because it's just so small but i do think that i put this into the discord already um if not i wonder how i can get that in now i can't we're just gonna have to look at it together um on the stream or if you have the package open the folder it's in the game master materials campaign maps and then it's the map o2 but you should see it on your screen a little bit. Um, I could also, no, I just, I can't because of the way that the stream is set up. I can't really fly it over into somewhere. Um, so it's sideways. It is sideways. Yeah, you do have to rotate, rotate mine too. Oh, good yeah. job guys, you're in there. Okay, so um, I already know as an example, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the zoom because everything these maps are super cool. They remind me of the fantasy maps at the beginning of the game. But 
The Darrington Press team is basically like, hey, build this map with your players. So Tedios, for example, we know is, if I zoom way in, uh, he's from this, and by default, I think this also means for you. I didn't know I lived on the coast. This yeah. is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, sir. yeah. Because there's this giant tree on here, <clears throat> which Stephen has said is the yin tree. And the the yang tree or the yin tree? The yin tree it's and the, the yang roots. The, yeah, the yin tree and the yang roots, I yeah. think. So we know that the Simia friend is living in the yin tree. His people live in and around this tree, which there are some little mountains and stuff there. And that fits the Ridgeborn stuff. And then underneath that, in the kind of ground area uh, or cliffy area, we have Jimbo. That's where you're from, right? Yeah, Jimble Deer, I believe is what it was. I love it so much. I don't know if you still like it, but I thought it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Jimble Deer, perfect. So it's all different. So it's totally not just. I'm not named after the town. That's fine. Yeah, 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 a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I think it's it's it's. I think it's beautiful. I really love it. Um, okay, great. So and again, if you're following along, our map here, uh, it's more on the western side of the the map. Um, there, the giant tree is where both. Tedios and Jimbo are from the Yin Tree and the Yang Roots, and it's a Ridgeborn area, but it's also near the coast. Yeah, kid, you know. Wait, do I have the right map number? Did you say campaign map three? Two. Two, 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 two. Two. Yeah. No wonder. I was like, where the hell is this tree? Okay, yeah. got you. <laughs> yeah, number two. <laughs> And yeah, it's uh, it's like it's on the western edge. I see it now. Yeah. As soon as I pulled it up, it Perfect. was there. And then Chris, I think, could you tell me where the Isle of, I think you had chosen one of the things that was down in the options. Yes. So these maps have little text boxes that have areas that you could name things. So for example, the Isle of the Old Gods. And Chris chose that for where his community is from. Where was that, Chris? Uh, far Northwest. Northwest. So like top left of the map there. The very top left of the map? Yeah. You see that little island up there? Uh, the one that's like half of it is not on the map? Yeah, yeah. Okay, with the little ruins that look kind of like um, a portal or like a Stonehenge? Yep. Yeah, my thought of it was kind of like Valinor for the Lord of the Rings <gasps> world. Oh, yeah. It's that place that you go past the like, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the heaven of sorts or a different... I love that. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Okay. Perfect. So Kayla, that leaves you. So do you, have you pinpointed where you're from? You yeah. Are, so uh, yeah, go ahead. If, if, now I'll talk to you. And if you tell me I'm like taking too much like creative license or whatever, you never will be. You never map, will you'll be. let me know. <laughs> okay. So like on the like, bottom left hand side do you see like the tiny little island yeah like up up yeah, up no higher up i'm sorry it's bigger than that okay to the left a little a little bit there you go no 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 no. it's bigger than that it's the bigger one there you go. With that's the, little... the one. Oh, yeah. cute that's the one so that it's gonna be the black gum hollow oh cute so and then the other little islands though like the the one next to it with like the smaller part like to the left a little bit this like a little pergola or whatever yeah that could be like because i told you there's the, the blue three, marshes right all in the blue marsh right and so that one could be we'll call that one cattail grotto okay and then, um yeah that one right there that one can be green haven green haven so. beautiful so that's, the, that's the three and so she's from the one with the little dock on it or whatever yeah that is so is. cute okay yeah. i was so certain in my brain that you were going to i had seen this other area at one point i was certain that you were gonna say you were from this far off place in the north east that looks like that i thought you were gonna say mm -hmm. you were it there. does look a little swampy i it thought does. about it but then the little dock it got me on yeah. the other one i love I that like, hey, little, and it's they're strung together so i think it's cute like island wise i love yeah. that so much okay so mm -hmm. i i need you guys to help me out with another thing we've been in the sable wood where do we think that is on this map and is the answer this area south of the yin tree 
uh, where, where uh, or if you can refresh your memory, like at the start of the uh, adventure, we were talking to like some royalty somewhere. Yeah, uh, it's like, just the like capital. The it's just called okay. the capital, though we could name that mm -hmm. capital as well. well if, I mean, if it was the capital, I mean, there's a giant there city a right giant above giant city mm -hmm. right here with the castle. I think that's a mm -hmm. perfect place. Yep. Yeah. And just, just like north, uh, northeast of that, uh -huh. possibly another uh, dwarf, dwarf city. North uh, that's to the right. Sorry, northeast. Bat <gasps> oh, oh yeah. look at that! Oh, yeah, wow! Dark. Ooh, I would like to introduce a concept that this is actually connected all underground, all the way to your area. Do we think that that's doable? Because I love it. It depends on how we want to do distances, but that could be... Yeah, that's map. pretty far, but... That's like half the map. <laughs> it is like half the map. Sorry, I am zoomed way in. Let me see how far it actually is. It is very far. But you know what? Y'all could be underneath the water, and it's a shorter distance. Mm. Yeah. Well, exactly connected to the capital city some way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I love a good underdark, and it's just like the entirety of every map has an underdark, you know. But it right. could very that's well be like that's uh, like that's the main. That's actually that, or that could be like the main city. And this is like a, I don't want to say an outpost, but like a you know. Oh my gosh! Like we ventured out and started mining under there and set up. That's where my family is from, is under mm -hmm. the tree. Yeah. And like there's like a community there, but this is like this is you know dwarf capital. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I almost want to make this Jindalia. We're gonna the Jindalian Empire. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, but that is in the in the manuscript, and I almost yeah, like that. yeah. I wouldn't want them to be this like outright connected, but definitely like. Uh... Okay, I'm not gonna make that Jindali, but I love that another dwarven settlement. That's amazing. I need a name for that at some point. Not now, but at some point. Okay, pretty soon. Letter time. Um. <laughs> okay. All right, last one um, is. Oh, what was my what was my other question? Oh, I had one more spot that I wanted to figure it's out. Gone. It really, really is. Oh well, well this is the sable wood. Oh no, no, no! I've, I I know what it is. Okay, my last question, guys, because we are the faint divinities. This is going to be the last question that wraps us up. There is a suggestion on here. The Forest of the Faint Divinities. Mm -hmm. Can you guys tell me on this map where is the Forest of the Faint Divinities? And feel free to go, get very creative. Go, go just south and zoom in for me. Like put uh, uh, south of what? Okay, okay. We'll go. Uh, bring your mouse up now into that like cavernous area a little bit to the right. Like the yeah, right there. Zoom into that. Is that? No, that's more fun, fun guy. Yeah, it's very Doesn't say like something like kind of like in a pocket area feels like uh, very like. Yeah, I think a pocket areas was where my brain went as well. Good place. Does forest think. have to be an actual forest? No, that's my point. Is y'all can get creative with this. It can mean anything. There's like a giant. No, hole. there's like a weird cratery. I see what you're saying. Oh, mm -hmm. this. Keep, keep no, going up. Keep, keep going, going up. It's bigger. Yeah. It's much bigger. Oh, much yeah, bigger. Oh, yeah, the bones were there. Oh, okay. So these are the bones. This is the yeah. forest of the faint divinities. <gasps> I love yeah, that. I mean, and then this is yeah. like, okay. And this is the giant the egg. I, I I would have to think about what that egg is. I always feel like it's mm -hmm. a forest field. It actually, uh, I mean, you know, going off of the other like crevice or like the crevice there, it could be like that's a giant skull and those are like a vertebrae coming off of it. Oh, yeah. that's really cool. One. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. wait, what? The, this wait, it's like goat, crash. The big orb. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. got the big orb, assuming <gasps> that's a skull. Yeah, you oh, see it. Oh, um, you know what this reminds me of? In Critical Role, they said that, like, the, well, this is common in a lot of fantasy, right? It's often called, like, the spine, the world spine yeah. or something. That's yeah. cool, though. <gasps> okay, great. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I think we've done it. We have the Forest yeah. of the Faint Divinities. We're going to flavor how that is part of our campaign at some point. I'm not saying we're going there, but I just felt it was important to put it there. Um, but I think that that's everything. I think we got some good feedback. We leveled up. We have did some bonding Hoorah. stuff. Is there anything else we want to talk about today? I think we're good. Okay. All right. Um, 
if you guys haven't already, find all of our pages, like, <laughs> follow, subscribe. <laughs> Steven at the end of everyone is like, there. remember? <laughs> like, <laughs> Don't marketing forget, time? we need you guys to do this stuff. And if you're doing it and you've already done it, make your friends do it too. Yeah, your friends, right. <laughs> family, that you're, you know, your, your dog, your cat. It's not actually going to watch us. Go ahead and get them subscribed. Did you it. finish up your taxes? Reach out to your accountant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. He needs something to take his mind off of all that.